To all those from the West, Russia has always been a threatening existence, huge, enigmatic, bizarre, indefinite, perhaps a little retrograde and indistinctly precarious. Before the revolution of Russia in 1917, the people from the West hardly knew anything about the country. For instance, the British had started a governmental intention 19th century diet of hostility and suspicion about Russia and its citizens. Such oppositions which dated back to 1850's Crimean War and royal struggle in the East dubbed on an attractive image of Russia. The Tsar was a spiteful dictator. Its noble men, an authoritative but an uncultured community of men, the Russian commoners, a dehumanized and patient crowd of peasants. The religion and culture of the Russian society was still not constructed and fundamentally primitive. The kingdom of the Tsars was definitely something which made the empire one of the most powerful continents and with the prospects of dominating Europe. Russia was tremendously huge with a land that stretched about 22.4 million square feet, about one-sixth of the globe. Russia had joined borders with 28 states, nations, and principalities. Her naval fleet guarded a coastline of more than 40,000 kilometers. In this massive kingdom was a great variety of landscape and topography. Russian land mostly consisted of fertile land, the icy tundra or steppe, the Ural Mountain that separated Europe from Asian Russia, and the Caucasus Mountains in the east were the mountains in the area. Main rivers were Don and Volga. However, there were many rivers and waterways in the area. Like the many types of land in Russia, there were many different types of cultures too. According to a study in 1897, Russian population was 128 million, which included about 100 various traditional groups, all of which were descendants of the many races and tribes who had battled for power and land in the previous years. Tatars, Kazakhs, Slavs, Bashkir, Poles, and many others. The Slavic tribe comprised most of the population, which was around 45%. Most of traditional groups were small and had just a few individuals. Difference in traditions brought in languages and miscellany of cultural ideas and religion. The official language was Russian while speaking, and Cyrillic in form while writing. It was also the commonest in European Russia. However, there were many other dialects and language used in the empire from the Aleut, the language of the Eskimos, to Polish in the West. The religion of the state was Catholic, but was unstructured and thousands of Russians followed the various other descents of Christianity, Judaism, and Buddhism. Even with its size so huge, Russian politics, fiscal, and communal development dawdled behind the other powerful nations of Europe like Germany, Britain, and France. The reason mainly was because the 19th century rules of Russia did not accept transformation or vicissitudes. They were unwilling to change the social arrangement of the Russian administration. As a result, many facets of Russian life replicated feudal more than contemporary standards. The Russian peasants were bonded serfs and could be sold and bought with land till 1861. A huge defeat by an army brought about the much-awaited transformations. When the Russians lost the war with Crimea, its industrial and technical inadequacies were bared, which uncovered a nation that lacked in infrastructure and power. After the Crimean War, Alexander II, the Russian former Tsar, began a program of transformation. The campaigns were never carried out properly and did not give the desired results. However, this was the beginning of Russian renovation from a semi-feudal agricultural frugality to partially industrialized modern country. Alexander II also pushed the system for social and political liberalization because many Russians cried out for participation in politics and bettered civic rights. Alexander II was killed by an assassin's bomb for his actions to reform Russia. Vladimir Lenin played an important role in the betterment of Russia. The 1917 October Revolution, in which he played an important role, overthrew the existing provisional government 
and establish a one-party state under the new Communist Party. His government withdrew from the World War I by ending the chosen Constituent Assembly. They also defeated the Bolshevik armies and redistributed the lands among nationalized banks, peasants, and large-scale industries. After the formation of Soviet Union, industrialization and freedom of women from being just a kitchen slave, Russia witnessed many changes and alternations in government. Headed by President Vladimir Putin, the country underwent many financial crises because of the price drop in crude oil. However, the nation stands strong and united with one of the biggest military powers in the globe. Muscovy or Grand Duchy of Moscow 1283-1547 Rise of Moscow The Principality of Moscow was founded by Daniil Alexandrovich, which finally exorcised the Tatars from Russia. Moscow was earlier just a vassal of Vladimir, which soon immersed its parent state. It was surrounded by swamplands, shielding woodlands, and positioned centrally in the river system of Russia. The main element which led to the ascending of Moscow was the mutual aid of its leader with the Mongol overlords, who gave them the title of Grand Prince of Moscow and made them mediators to gather Tatar tribute from other Russian princedoms. On becoming the center of Russian Orthodox Church, the principality gained its stature. The head of the church had fled from Kiev and made his way to Vladimir in 1299 to establish the headquarters of the church in Moscow in the same title of Kiev Metropolitan. The control of the Mongols started to decline in the 14th century and the Grand Princess felt free to oppose the Mongol yoke openly. The Mongols were defeated in 1380 in the war fought at Kulikovo on the Don River. Although the hard-earned victory did not end the Tatar rule in Russia, but it brought recognition to Grand Prince Dmitry Donskov. Moscow's leadership was now steadfast, and by the 14th century, its terrain spread through marriage, battles, and purchase. Ivan III, the Great In 15th century, Ivan III was the most successful among all princes in gathering Russian lands to increase wealth and population under their rule and setting base for a Russian national state. Many princes deserted their provinces on Ivan's attack, which he captured and added to his realm. He contended with the upper principalities in the river basins of Oka and Dnieper. He successfully annexed Tver and Novgorod and tripled the size of Moscow under his rule. Ivan III soon decreed complete dominion over all the Russian nobles and princes and refused to pay any tribute to the Tatars. Ivan started a chain of attacks which unlocked the way for a complete defeat of already declining Golden Horde, now simply known as Great Horde, after it was divided into several hordes and khanates. To protect the southern borders of their terrain against the attacks of hordes and Crimean Tatars, Ivan II and his successors constructed the Great Abadi Belt and gave manners to the lords who in return served in military. The manor system delivered a base for an emergent mounted troops created army. The lesser princes were enforced to accept the Grand Prince of Moscow and his successors as the undisputed sovereigns with control over jurisdictional, army, and external affairs, and later Ivan IV was the first ruler to officially crown himself Tsar. Chardom of Russia, 1547-1721 the Terrible The despotic power of the Tsars touched its highest during the rule of Ivan IV, 1547-1584. He callously subordinated nobles according to his will and executed or exiled them if they opposed. In his conquest, he assimilated a substantial Muslim Tatar populace and arose as a multicultural state. It was in this period that the merchant Stroganov family laid strong foundations at Urals and employed Russian Cossacks to take over Siberia. Later on, during his rule, Ivan IV distributed his nation into two. The zone which was named Oprichnina, which was an institution comprising 6,000 political police known as Oprichniki. On orders of Ivan IV, 
they massacred aristocrats. This campaign was combined with epidemics, military losses, and poor harvest debilitated Russia and the Crimean Tatars were able to grab some regions of central Russia and burn down Moscow. During the end of the rule of Ivan IV, the Swedish and Polish Lithuanian armies intervened and devastated the northwest and northern regions of Moscow. Time of Troubles Feodor, son of Ivan IV, died without leaving an heir to his throne which gave rise to many civil wars and led to foreign intervention. The time known as Time of Troubles lasted from 1603 to 1613. Cold weathers destroyed the crops, which brought the Russian famine of 1601 to 1603 and augmented the social ineptitude. Boris Godunov's rule concluded in turmoil. Civil war combined with foreign interference, destruction of many cities, and evacuation of the rural regions. The nation swayed by internal commotion also enticed many influences of intrusion by the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The Polish attacked Moscow, and when Moscow revolted, they were viciously crushed and the city was set on fire. They ruled and controlled till the patriotic army led by Prince Dmitry Pozharsky and Kuzma Minin banished the force from Moscow on November 4, 1612. Russia lived through the time of troubles and the reign of the immoral Tsars as a government central administration was strong. The officials of the government continued with their service despite the legality of the ruler's throne or the group who was regulating the throne. Nevertheless, the Swedish Empire and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth lost much lands in the battles of Ingrian War and Russian-Polish War respectively in the time of troubles which was aggravated by the successional disaster. Accession of the Romanovs and Early Rule after the Polish were banished from the city, a group of representatives from 50 cities aided by a few peasants elected Michael Romanov to the throne in February 1613. The Romanov dynasty reigned over Russia till 1917. Russia took advantage of the conflicts between Swedish and the Polish and made peace with the Swedish in 1617 and signed an armistice with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1619. The nobles helped the Rovanovs in finishing their job of administrative monopolization. Serfdom was now completely sanctioned and the peasants who ran away from their nobles were declared fugitive of the state. The nobles and the state put devastating taxes on the peasants. The middle class did not escape their wrath and like the serfs, traders and craftsmen too were gauged taxes and were not permitted to change abode. The complete populace was subjugated to taxes and military rule. The people of Moscow and peasants revolted against the Rovanovs and Europe witnessed the biggest uprise of the peasants in 1667. Cossacks responded in contradiction to the rising monopolization of the state and runaway serfs joined them in the rebellion. Stenka Razin, the Cossack leader, succeeded in overthrowing many local governments and placing Cossack rule but his expedition was crushed soon and he was caught and beheaded by the Tsar's army. Imperial Russia 1721-1917 Peter the Great He played a significant role in the upgrading of Russia, the European state system. He also brought autocracy in the nation. Russia was no doubt a massive land but had a population of just 14 million had no international trade system, and the production houses were dependent on the weather. His initial military energies were against the Ottoman Turks. He wanted to establish his hold in Black Sea by taking down Azov. Access to Baltic Sea was blocked by the Swedish as its area was enclosed by them in three sides. He made truce with Denmark and Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which resulted in a battle that ended in Sweden making peace with the Russians. Peter assimilated four provinces and secured his desired entrance to the sea. He founded St. Petersburg in 1703, which was soon to replace Russia's long traditional center. Russia's interpolation in the Commonwealth, marked with the end of the rule of Augustus II of Poland and beginning of Russian domination of that region. In 1721, 
Peter celebrated by assuming the title of emperor and Russian stardom became Russian Empire. He brought about many changes in the old government departments like nine-member senate took the place of council of nobles, Boyer Duma. The Orthodox Church was partly unified into the nation's administrative organization. The Patriarchate was obliterated with a collective body called Holy Synod directed by an official of the government. Russians were a great power now, but Peter died in 1725 without leaving a proper heir to the throne. Catherine II the Great It was almost 40 years before Russia could see a good ruler after Peter. Catherine II was a German princess who was married to a German heir to the Russian crown. She complied with her husband's murder as she found him not worthy of the throne. She patronized science, learning, and arts and backed the revival of the Russian dignity that arose after the death of Peter. Catherine propagated charter to the gentry, restating rights and freedoms of the Russian nobility, and eliminating obligatory state service. She detained control of all the church lands, radically abridged the extent of the monasteries, and put the enduring ministry on a tight budget. She promoted foreign policy extensively, but the costs were covered through the serfs who had to continuously serve the lords, which led to a rebellion. Catherine successfully suppressed the revolt. She extended the boundaries of Russia to the Black Sea by defeating the already dying Ottoman Empire and made allies with Persia and Austria. Russia was now a major European power. Alexander I Alexander I continued Catherine's work and began with seizing Bessarabia from Ottomans and Finland from Sweden. He was mainly known for defeating Napoleon. When Napoleon invaded Russia, he least did his 450,000 soldiers would live empty-handed. Although the Russian casualties were high in the battle fought at Borodino and the war was indecisive, Napoleon was unable to defeat and capture Russia. The Russians burned food supplies of Napoleon's army, which was already facing logistic problems. Most of Napoleon's soldiers died from cold, disease, ambushed by the peasants, and starvation. Napoleon and his army recoiled, and the Russian army followed them to Western Europe and took over Paris. Out of the 43 million people, Russia has 1.5 million lives lost in 1812, out of which 300,000 were soldiers and the remaining were peasants and serfs. The year 1815 marked Napoleon's defeat and Alexander was given the name Savior of Europe. At the Congress of Vienna, he redrew the map of Europe, after which he was the King of Congress Poland. He subdued the revolts in Europe, which he foresaw as immoral threats to the genuine Christian royals by forming a holy alliance with Prussia and Austria. Even though Russian Empire would later on have an important part to play in the politics further in 1848, its preservation of serfdom prohibited the financial growth of any noteworthy mark. Where Europe was seeing fast growth in the time of industrialization, colonialism, and sea trade, Russia was left far behind during the time discouraging its capability to keep strong military. Nicholas I and the Decembrist Revolt Russia's inordinate power disguised the ineptitude of its administration, the seclusion of its folks, and its pecuniary backwardness. Alexander I agreed to converse on the constitutional reforms and some of them were introduced too but none of them were applied. Alexander I was succeeded by his brother Nicholas I. When the Russia was fighting with the Napoleon armies, Many nobles and aristocrats traveled to Europe and were exposed to the freeways of Western Europe, and on return, a small group of nobles wanted to overthrow Nicholas I and make his brother the ruler of Russia. Nicholas I suppressed the revolt known as the Sembridge Revolt and turned away from the westernization program. There were some favorable military moves during his reign, which sealed the Treaty Turkmenkai and Russia gained the now Igdir, Nakhchivan, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. More invasions on Anatolia got them the Ottoman cities of Gumushani and Erzurum. 
he also gained the support of the Orthodox population of Greece because of his pretension to protect and save them. Most of the Ottoman and Persian territories were now under Russian rule by the 1830s. Later, in 1831, Nicholas I suppressed a huge revolt in Congress Poland, but it was soon to be followed by a massive Polish and Lithuanian revolt later on. The Russian Army During his reign, Nicholas I maintained a huge army of 1 million soldiers against a population of around 70 million. Their weapons and ways were out of fashion, but the Tsar dressed himself like a soldier and paraded with great pride after the defeat of Napoleon. For instance, the cavalry horses just paraded well but performed poorly in wars. The gleam and plate disguised deep flaws which he did not pay any heed to. There were generals who took care of civilian agencies regardless of their qualification. Anyone skeptical of having gained fame in the war was given a position. The army had become a way for social upliftment for many young nobles from areas like Finland, Georgia, Holland, and Baltic. The other side of it was that many criminals, troublemakers, were punished to serve the army for a lifetime. The system for recruiting was detested by the commoners as they were forced to keep a soldier for six months in a year. Russia's military was technologically poor, frail, and organizationally inept. Although Russia had advanced and captured most of South, Russia did not build any railroads in that direction which led to poor communication. The government was peppered with dishonesty and ineptitude and not prepared for any battle. The army was only good for having parades and wreath with colonels who grabbed their men's salaries and the army lacked in self-esteem. British and the French armies on the other hand were updated with the latest technologies. Radicals and Reactionaries With the westernization of Western Europe, there were two sections in Russia, one which wanted to embrace modernization and the other who wanted to stick to their old ways. The people who wanted to stick to old traditions were Slavophiles, who were against the administration and preferred communism of medieval Russian village community or Mir to the individuality of West. In all this unrest, Michael Bakunin rose as the father of anarchism. Bakunin had left Russia in 1842 for Western Europe and became an active member in the communist movement. In 1849, when he participated in the May Uprising in Dresden, he was handed back to Russia and sent away to Siberia. He managed to escape Siberia in 1861 and started organizing revolts. He did not agree with socialism of Karl Marx and he and his anarchists revolted. In 1872, Michael and his supporters were suppressed by Karl Marx and banished from First International. He died in oblivion, but Russian extremists like Peter Kropotkin and Alexander Herzen continued his incomplete work. Alexander II and Abolition of Serfdom Although the Russian had defeated Napoleon and his army, the Crimean War clearly reflected the poorly managed army when it faced the combined powers of France and Britain. Alexander's wish to reform Russia was well known, and he wished to finish the worst thing which the administration confronted was that of serfdom. The liberation of serfs in 1861 was by far the most significant event in the history of Russia. It was the commencement of the culmination for the landed nobility's domination of control. Free serfs flocked to the cities, rousing the industries and the middle class to grow and flourish. The government aided the peasants to buy the land from their owners and levied a tax known as redemption tax which was charged at 5% of the total cost of the given land per year. The landowners were given bonds by the administration in return for the lands they lost. Further, Alexander II systematized the legal system and elected judges were set up. He abolished capital punishment, brought an end to a few rights of the nobles, promoted education, and promoted the local government through Zemstvo. He modernized his army and sold Alaska to United States of America, fearing the British would snatch it. He made peace and allies internationally 
and stretch his empire in Siberia. While he was working through the reforms, Alexander II was assassinated in 1881. Nihilism Nihilists were believed in destroying human laws and institutions, assuming these laws and institutions were corrupt. Nihilism developed in Russia in 1860s, and they considered by the faith that the world lacks coherent, importance, unbiased truth or value. They probed the old values and awed the Russian foundation. They moved yonder being virtuously logical to becoming leading political forces after becoming a part in the reason of reform. Their way was expedited by the earlier activities of the Decembrists who rebelled in 1825, and the fiscal and radical adversity initiated by the Crimean War which instigated many Russians lose trust in political organizations. They first tried to turn the aristocrats to the cause of reform, but they failed to do so, and then they moved to the peasants. This movement which targeted the commoners was known as the populist movement. The thought of the movement was that the commoners had the knowledge to lead a nation peacefully. Autocracy and Reaction Under Alexander III Alexander III was an absolute opposite of his father and a stout Slavophile. He assumed Russia could come out of the pandemonium only if they shut out the destabilizing effects of Western Europe. One of the people who most influenced the Tsar was his advisor Konstantin Pobedonosev, who was also his son's tutor. According to his teachings, the royals should fear the freedom of speech and anyone who revolted constitutions and parliaments should be suppressed. The rebellions and Russification was carried out in the Russian Empire. World War I Nicholas II was bound by accord to partake in the World War I and help Serbia from Austria. When Germany and Austria-Hungary opened conflicts in 1914, the Russian responded with attacks. The large Russian army fought persistently with zeal despite weak logistics and organization. They fought to the extent when they did not have any weapons and were sent unarmed, asked to pick any weapons they could find and managed to lay down many Austrian and German soldiers. The Ottoman and German fleets barred Russia's way to export and import goods from the Black and the Baltic Seas. The effects of the war were discouraging. Fuel and food were short. Inflation was at its peak and fatalities kept pouring. The underpaid factory workers went on regular strikes. The peasants looking for land reforms became restless and the disbelief on the government strengthened when rumors of Rasputin's kept increasing impact. Though his assassination brought an end to the scandal, but the lost reputation of the dictatorship could not be reinstated. Russian Revolution the rule of the Tsars almost came to an end by February 1917. Late in the month of February 1917, in Petrograd, named for St. Petersburg, there was a strike in a factory. On February 23, 1917, many women who worked in the textile factories stopped work and protested for lack of food and even called other workers to join them in the protest. Most of the workers stopped working and there were fights on the streets. The city was consumed in chaos. Duma was dispersed on the orders of the Tsar, and the protesters were ordered to return back to work, and the armies were ordered to shoot any street protests. The February Revolution elicited when the soldiers also sided with the demonstrators. On March 2, 1917, the Tsar with his nobility fell as Nicholas II relinquished. In order to fill the gap, Duma professed a provisional government which was led by Prince Lvov and was jointly known as the Russian Republic. The Petrograd collectivists formed a council or Soviet elected from the soldiers and the workers who could pressurize the bourgeois temporary government. Meanwhile, Vladimir Lenin completed his exile and aided by Germany returned to Russia. In November 1917, the Soviets gained control of the government and sent the existing temporary government to exile. 
the events were known as October Revolution. The elected constituent assembly denied to exist merely as a rubber stamp for the Bolsheviks and was disbanded by Lenin's army and the remnants of democracy were cleared. Lenin freed his government from the war problems by getting rid of the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. Russian Civil War The Bolsheviks hold on the government was not strong and there was a new revolt that sparked among the new government and the opponents. The enemy power sent many armies to support these anti-communist rebellions so that Russia could be forced to join the war again. By 1921, the Bolsheviks controlled most of their enemies except Poland, Baltic states, Finland, and Moldavian Democratic Republic. Soviet Union 1922-1991 Creation of Soviet Union The critical history of Russia is between 1922 and 1991, the history of Soviet Union or Socialist Republics. The Union was formed in December 1922 by the leaders of Russia's Communist Party. There were four constituent republics in the new nation, the Belarusian SSR, the Ukrainian, the Transcaucasian SFSR, and the Russian SFSR. A centralized government was formed based on a series of factories, Soviets in villages, and cities. All Soviets ended in an all-union Congress of Soviets, and while it seemed that the Congress was the governing association, the body was actually ruled from Moscow by the Communist Party, which was governed by the Politburo. War Communism and New Economic Policy The time from the amalgamation of the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917 till 1921 is called the time of war communism. All the small and big industries, small businesses, land, and the money in the system was regulated. Revolts soon began because the peasants wanted to be paid in cash and hated to give their extra grains to the administrations as a part of policies of the civil war. The new economic policy started by Lenin allowed Russia to recoil from the wars and the peasants were then free to sell their extra grains in the market. Commerce was enthused by authorizing private retail trade. However, the state was still accountable for transportation, heavy industry, banking, and other public services. Though there was antagonism within the communists who critic the kulaks or the rich peasants, the country showed rapid growth and the economy invigorated. Changes in the Russian society With the changes in the economy, the social life of Russians also witnessed many changes. The administration always attempted to weaken the male-dominated system of the family from the time of the rebellion. Divorce was no longer subject to court proceedings, making the woman free. They were no longer responsible to have children, and abortion was legalized in 1920. Girls were invigorated to study and make a career in an office or factory. Public child care centers were set up for the kids, and efforts were made to draw the attention of the public from home to education and Soviet clubs and frivolous groups. The government banned any discrimination against the minorities and more than 200 minority groups were integrated in the Soviet life. Keeping in mind the medical aspect of the nation, several campaigns against cholera, malaria, and typhus were carried out. The count of doctors increased because of the training, child deaths decreased, and the life expectancy of human increased. The main obstruction in the path of progress was the Russian Orthodox Church and with the promotion of materialism and atheism which was in line with the Marxist theory. Many religious leaders were exiled and the education system was unglued from the church. Religious teachings were practiced only at home. Industrialization and Collectivization 1929 and 1939 was an unbridled decade in the history of Soviet Union, a time of heavy industrialization and internal skirmishes as Stalin took control of the Soviets, applying practically uncontrolled power. In 1929, he offered the first five-year plan in which he first abolished the NEP 
and targeted on accretion easy capital resources through accumulation of industries, restriction on the manufacture of consumer goods, and consolidating the farms of peasant into collective farm called kolkhozes. Russia had never witnessed such control of the economy by the government. A million of peasants were forced to give up their lands, and when they rebelled, they were executed by the authorities. Confiscation of the greens killed millions of peasants. As a result, they fled to the cities and started working in the industries, which rapidly urbanized the cities. One of the poorest nations of its times, Russia outdid Germany and even Japan later in the 20th century. All the loyal Bolsheviks were liquidated in the Great Purges, and any other rebellions were strictly punished. World War II In 1939, a failed attempt to negotiate with Finland started a war between Soviet and Finland, which was known as the Winter War. The war cost the Red Army 1 million men but forced Finland to sign Moscow Peace Treaty, Ladoga Karelia, and Karelian Isthmus. In 1940, Romania received an ultimatum from the USSR to surrender northern Bukovina and Bessarabia, and during the same time, the Russians captured three earlier independent Baltic states, Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia. On June 22, 1941, Germany attacked Soviet and captured Ukraine, obstructed Leningrad, and threatened to seize Moscow. Though in December, the Red Army successfully defeated the German soldiers. German managed to keep up the initiative for about a year in Caucasus and Volga. Nevertheless, defeats in Kursk and Stalingrad decided the fate of Germans who never got the strength to keep up their campaign. This changed the entire phase of World War II. Red Army had freed most of Ukraine by 1943, and by May 1945, Soviet came triumphant in the war against the Germans. Three months later, as Soviet had agreed in the Yalta Conference, they started the invasion of Manchuria and defeated the Japanese troops, which marked the last battle of World War II of the Soviet. The victory of the Soviet cost 27 million deaths to the nation. The towns were savage while the Germans occupied them. They almost finished the Jew population in the genocide carried out by them. Around 5.5 million Soviet prisoners of war died in the German camps. The extraordinary ascension of humankind taken as a whole, may be abridged as a series of triumphs of perception over sightless powers, in society, in nature, in man. Grave and imaginative thought can vaunt of its utmost conquest up to now in the brawl with nature. Science has already touched a point where man is obviously about to master matter. But communal associations are still establishing like corals. Parliamentary lights only the exterior of culture, and even that with a somewhat fake light. In contrast with the mean and other inheritance from the anthropophagi and cavemen, consensus is of course a great subjugation, but it leaves the sight less show of powers in the communal association of men unscathed. It was in contradiction of this bottomless fear of the comatose that the October Revolution was the first to advance its hand. The Soviet system tried to bring purpose and strategy into the very base of civilization, where only a crude magnitude had governed. Whatever the circumstances were, Russians stood headstrong and fought for their rights. They were penalized and massacred and even fought for others. It took them some time to come out of their situation, but this day, Russia stands headstrong shoulder to shoulder as one of the undefeated powers of the world.